comes on the phone sometimes, it, or I'm sorry, I'm going on the TV. I only look at it quickly, I promise. Um, it is hard to hear it, so let's speak up so we can make sure we get the word out. Okay, uh, let's call to order the regular business meeting of the Board of Education for Monday, December 10th. If I could ask everyone to stand, please recite the Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, here we are in December, almost halfway through the year. That is amazing. Uh, you guys look so happy. <laughs> All right, um, let's see, uh, roll call please. Jim Batson. Here. Pat Grudy. Here. Lisa Hessel. Here. Kevin Huber. Here. Scott Luce. Here. Karen Lundstedt. Here. Casey Rooney. Here. All right, so we have everybody. Our agenda tonight, uh, we'll open it up for public comment. <coughs> Anybody like to speak, I'd ask you please to limit your comments to three minutes or less. Uh, we all have some student recognition. Uh, we'll have updates from our student school board reps. We'll have um, an update from our superintendent. We'll approve the consent vote agenda, which we just reviewed uh, mom moments ago in committee. Uh, we'll have a brief update from facilities and finance, an update from programming personnel. Um, we're going to have, uh, are you going to update on property? We're we just going to talk about that in closed session. Okay. Uh, Cito? Great. Okay. And IASB, Jim? No. Nothing? Okay. Uh, then we will have an executive session tonight. We have three topics. One, collective negotiating matters, 5 ILCS 120 2 c 2 Second topic, employment of an employee, 5 ILCS 120 2 c 1 And then a third, purchase of real property, 5 ILCS 120 2 c 5 um, Other than to return to open session, we have no plans for action tonight. Is that correct? Okay. All right. Anything else? All right, let's start with um, anybody from the public who would like to speak tonight. The camera pans to the microphone. A man in a blue shirt stands to address the board. Hi there. Is this where I go? Yeah. yeah. Uh, I've been invited to introduce myself. My name is Don Carmichael. I'll be running for the school board uh, in the April 2nd election. I just wanted to say uh, thank you for the work that you're doing. And when I come and I sit down, now you know why. I I'm just here to, to watch how it goes on. Great. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> Anybody else? Okay. Um, so we'll move on to student recognition. The camera follows Dr. Tom Kulandes from the board table to the microphone. Good evening. Good evening. Hey, am I on? Am I live? <laughs> All right. I'm Tom Kulandes, the always proud principal of Libertyville High School. And tonight, <coughs> I have the distinct honor of introducing one of our Wildcat swimmers. Miss Emma Gleason, who is, you're going to hear all about. Um, she is an outstanding member of our swimming and diving team. And to talk about her, I'm going to bring up our varsity head coach, Mr. Eric Rogers. So come on down, Emma and Eric. Eric Rogers and Emma Gleason step up to the microphone, replacing Dr. Kulandes. <laughs> All right, so this is uh, Emma Gleason. Um, throughout the season, she broke uh, five different uh, pool records at different schools, including our own. Um, she set our varsity 100 butterfly record this season. Uh, she won Lake County in two different events. She won conference in two different events. She won sectionals in two different events. You can see kind of a, a theme here. Um, you know, and then went to state and got 12th in the 200 freestyle, uh, fifth in the 100 butterfly. So it was a state finalist, medalist in two different events. Um, and just did a phenomenal job this season. Is a, you know, amazing student athlete and we're so proud to have her representing our team uh, every single day. So congratulations. I'm on a great Emma receives a certificate and a handshake from Dr. Kulandes. And um, I don't know who was I don't know who was running our Twitter, but they tweeted out that Emma was a senior and that her career was over, but she's actually only a junior. So she will be a great record in our new pool. That is correct. Next year in our new pool. <laughs> Yeah, sure. 
Hey, wait, you should be here for that. Emma and Coach Rogers stand for a picture with Dr. Kulandas, Superintendent Lee and Board President Grudy. The camera pans back to the school board. All are seated at a U-shaped table. School Board President Pat Grudy. So one uh, little unique tidbit, um, those with records in the old pool most likely shall never be broken. Uh, yeah, mm -hmm. correct. That's right? That's right. Getting there. How often do you get to set a record no, that shall not be broken? Wait, we gotta get through the season, right? Yeah, the girls' season's over. The season's over, okay, there we go. Okay, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna ad-lib this a little bit, because um, I see we have a lot of other students in the audience today. All right, um, so who would like to be the brave student who would like to just give us a brief um, sentence or two about why you're all here tonight. I'm sure there's at least <laughs> one brave one in the crowd here. The camera pans to the microphone. A female in a white hoodie is at the mic. Um, I, I don't know about, I think it's all related to government classes, but I have Mr. Tamayo, and we either wrote a letter to a congressman about an issue that we wanted to um, persuade them on or we came to this meeting and we take notes and listen to what you guys are doing. Great. So yeah, Great. I was more Great. interested awesome. in this. <laughs> Welcome. 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 The power I hope you me wisely. Because, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> because, because she was the brave one, if I had powers vested in me to dismiss her earlier, I would, but I can't. Yeah. <laughs> well, I, I, I was, I was, I was ready to nominate Nico, but I, I didn't see you, Nico, volunteering. And I see Ryan Padilla over there, too, raising your hands. And, uh, but you know, Pat, there are two principals in here, so I'm sure they can handle that, right? We want to get some out. Sorry, we're going to try, okay. we're going to, try to make this quick, up quick for you so that uh, you don't have to stay here too late. All right. Um, let's see. Updates from our student school board reps. The camera pans to the left showing the student school board representatives. VHHS student Brandon Kim. Um, Okay, so this past Friday morning, 12, yeah, this past Friday morning, 12 VH students were awarded the Google Class Act um, at a ceremonial breakfast. Um, staff nominated specific students who went beyond classroom expectations and really encapsulated the daring message. Um, these students included the following, freshman uh, Sasha uh, Vega, and then Connor Papatoni, and then sophomores Kayla Rubin, Bianca Zulo, juniors Clarissa Cizone, and then Irene Levering. And then seniors, Marissa DeLone, uh, Janice Yoon, Alexander Airline, Brandon Kim, and then John Bilkey. And then, oh, there's one more actually. Teresa Zimmerman. And then I'd like to say congrats to these December Cougar Class Act recipients. Uh, last Sunday was the annual Madrigal Dessert um, at the Byron Colby Barn. Uh, team required uh, performed 24 songs in back-to-back -back performances. And as spoken by many members, the resident space made the music even better. Um, Chamber Choir also spent the day to share Christmas carols throughout the com community. Um, they started in the soundproof room at the WGN radio station in Chicago. The same day they came back to perform at district office for staff and, and for students at elementary south and Townline, um, with a special performance by VH seniors during the 12 days of Christmas. They closed their, uh, they closed their day at Brookdale, Brookdale Retirement singing carols for the residents. Um, Vernon Hills Varsity Wrestling won their Thanksgiving Invitational. Um, they swept the competition going 10-0 and have continued to show great modes of athletic performances in their uh, meets the season. So congrats, wrestling. A varsity dance competition was hosted at home this week. Our varsity comp competitive dance team finished second with another stunning performance. So congrats, dance. Um, social studies teacher Matt Clifford received a Golden Apple Award nomination. Um, speaking with him earlier today, uh, he's, he was very honored to be nominated for the opportunity, and he and his students are excited to see where he goes in the application process. So congrats, Mr. Clifford. Um, all students in the government classes have invested time this semester to organize an activist or civic um, engagement project for the Lake County community. Um, to close the semester, um, Vernon Hills High School, the Vernon Hills High School foyer um, will be filled with students participating in the civic engagement fair, where they'll have the opportunity to display their hard work. And I had the chance to talk to a few students about their project specifically. So Nate Tran wrote a letter to the Lake County Board representing about forest preservation, how money should be spent on preservation over development and then um, Melody Farms is part of the discussion. And then Danny Wisdom and Luke Gunnison are doing um, a project as well, and they're con contacting a representative about student mental health and how this stress in high schools have increased over the years. 
Um, BH Give is pushing for another fundraising initiative to raise money to build bunk beds for our sister school in Uganda. So the current goal is to raise $9,000 for 30 beds and 60 mattresses. Um, fundraising efforts have been aided through the VHHS community, including Mrs. Benson Specialty Foods, Mrs. McDonald Quesadilla Challenge, and then the Variety Show. And so also VH Give ambassadors were also sent out past Friday to get second, to get second period classes to participate too, and encouraging students and staff to donate change. Um, to track progress, a model bunk bed will be built in the foyer this coming week to, to put our progress on display. VHHS student Taylor Fenn. So the orchestra and choir holiday concert is taking place this Thursday at 6 and 8 p.m. in the Vernon Hills Auditorium. These ensembles will be for performing festive holiday pieces like Sleigh Ride and Silent Night to spur excitement for the holiday season. Our talented students will be decked out in festive sweaters and other holiday-related apparel. They have been rehearsing for months and are excited to spread their holiday cheer. Congratulations to 2017 alumni Andre Schmidt, a walk-on kicker at Syracuse University, on receiving the College Football Lou Groza Award. This award is one of the highest honors for a college football player as it is awarded to the top college football place kicker in the United States. We are so proud of Andre and we truly miss his talent on our own football team. Vernon Hills School Spirit Store is now going online. Students will be able to purchase all of their Cougar apparel, apparel and flaunt their school spirit at any time. The store sales will no longer be limited to football games, specific Fridays, and other events, so students will be free to purchase at their leisure. Four times throughout the year, VHHS staff takes the time to recognize some of their own. Staff, staff nominate colleagues have, who have gone above and beyond half of kids, or sorry, <laughs> above and beyond behalf of kids. This month's 12 staff members were nominated. This includes Chris Curry, Samantha Phillips, Rachel Campbell, Myra Jaimez Antunez, uh, Mandy Patrick, Joseph Reagan, Evelyn Chavez, Heather Van Wagner, Pam Dirks, Megan Geltner, Megan Hendricks, Laura Oliver, Jessica Chapman, Deanne Fernbach, Bill Matheson, Corey Smith, Matt McCarthy, and Tony Isabelli. Congratulations to our Special Olympians who took second place in state and floor hockey. They were some of the best teams in the state at Northeastern Illinois University on November 17th. Keep up the good work. German one, German one students recently took a field trip down to Chicago to, to visit the Chris Kindle Market vendors in a real world, or, what just oh, sorry. Visit the Chris Kindle Market in Daly Plaza. The students were able to utilize their German skills and speak to vendors in a real world setting. The students tried all different kinds of German delicacies and were able to learn much more in depth about the culture that, that their language is a part of. Five talented Vernon Hill students have been selected for the IHSAE Small Work Show at Blick Art Materials in Lincoln Park. Students Lily Mang, Drew Laser, Rachel Hayden, Leah Hayden, and Sasha Scotchkov were selected of the 350 different applicants from around Illinois. Only 85 works were selected for the show and we are so proud of our students. LHS student Katherine Corliss. So. The boys basketball team is off to a 3-5 start this season with wins coming against Carmel, Stevenson, and Glenbrook North. Um, the Cats take on Waukegan this, tu this Tuesday at 7 p.m. Um, the girls basketball team is currently 8-2 and is riding a five-game winning streak. Um, the girls have recently defeated Warren, Stevenson, Mundline, and Zion Benton. They're looking forward to squaring off against Waukegan this Thursday. The boys swim team has had one of their first meets of the season this year when they, played, er, when they competed against Stevenson on Thursday. Tyler Wongwin uh, received a third, a first place finish in the 100 meter fly and the boys look forward to continuing that success against Warren. The Model United Nations Club current, uh, recently had two conferences. From November 15th through 18th, 20 students from all four years traveled with advisors to Brunswick, New Jersey for the Princeton Model United Nations Conference. With committees ranging from the fall of Constantinople to the UN Security Council, all the delegates had a great experience. Two students, seniors Alice Lillydahl and junior Drew Hopkins won awards for their stellar performance in their committees. And just over a little week ago, a uh, little over a week ago, uh, 15 club members also went to the Chicago International Model United Nations Conference. New members and returning members alike enjoyed themselves immensely. And again, two, so two students, sophomores Emma Black and Andrew Benoit, won awards for their outstanding performance in their committees. On December 8th, the Public Forum and Linkus Douglas debate teams participated in the Belvedere North Tournament. Debaters put in hours of research and practice in order to prepare for the day-long event. 
Everybody performed exceptionally well, and a few members received awards for their performance. Junior Drew Hopkins ranked fifth place for speaking in bar varsity Lincoln Douglas. Sarah Dowden ranked fourth place for speaking in overall in JV Lincoln Douglas. And Junior Maddie Coons ranked fifth best speaker in JV Lincoln Douglas. The Science Olympiad team is off to a strong start of their season after a fantastic performance at the Harlem Invitational. Members of all grade levels uh, medaled in a plethora of events, ranging from chemistry to herpetology. It was an especially exciting event for the team's new freshman members, who medaled at their very first competition to perform so well as new members in a major accomplishment. Uh, that is a major accomplishment. And the team is now preparing for their next competition at the University of Chicago. And Matthew Kwong couldn't be here today, but he also won two awards for his events, um, so we're very proud of him too. <laughs> and the LHSYS team recently had a competition at the Milwaukee School of Engineering. The team performed exceptionally well throughout the day in their events. Senior Jake Duffy got first place in physics, and junior Sammy Fan got first place in chemistry. Senior Bruce Center has been carrying out a series of AP US history workshops for current APUSH students. These workshops dealt with topics such as test taking tips, essay writing skills, and finals review planning, to proving to be of great benefit to everybody who participated. Students in German 1 classes were able to get real world practice using their skills when they visited the um, Chris, Kindle, Chris Kindle Market last Tuesday. Uh, the students took videos of the experience and will use the footage as a part of the presentation for their unit. Uh, Spanish 3 honors classes recently turned old calendars into picture books as a part of a service project. Uh, the Spanish books were created to support a preschool program in Managua, Nicaragua. They hope to continue the project in the future. The Wildcat Initiative for Sharing and Helping, otherwise known as WISH, held its annual dinner this passing Thursday in the cafeteria. At this festive event, students help to serve food, lead activities for families' young kids, and distribute gifts to families. Helping deliver the gifts is typically an exci especially exciting part of the event as students work as a class to raise funds or gather gifts for a family for a number of weeks uh, leading up to the event. So getting to meet that family is quite a joyous moment. Early college results are beginning to roll in this week. As a result, the CRC hosted a support group before school this morning. Discussion topics included, what do I do if I'm admitted, denied, deferred? And how do I handle if a friend gets in and I don't? Uh, so this program is obviously a great support to all those who are in this very stressful time. The annual One Act plays took place on Friday, November 30th. Students directed a series of short plays and some even wrote their own. The show also featured student written improv sketches which allow the audience to feel like they're a part of the performance as well. The Pop Up Art Show took place on November 30th in the main gym during the school day. The annual show was a huge hit as always and was very well attended. People could participate in a number of interactive artistic activities, such as fish print making, getting a figure drawn by a number of art students, or making linoleum stamping blocks. The show featured work from students in various classes in the art department and a variety of different media. It's incredible to see a collection of work by such talented students. The district's annual holiday dinner and choir concert took place on December 4th at LHS. The concert was prefaced with a festive meal, which hosted 300 senior citizens from the area. The concert itself was a huge hit with, a beautiful, with beautiful performances from all the different groups. With a wide range of styles, everybody was sure to have an enjoyable experience. In the music department, the annual orchestra festival took place on November 29th, and the jazz ensembles held their first performance this passing Friday at the St. Lawrence Church. Uh, lots of practice paid off with these highly successful concerts. And lastly, 11 LHS students were selected to participate in the Illinois Music Educators All-State Ensembles, a highly selective ensemble with students from all over the state. They'll rehearse and perform with the guest conductor for a final state festival in the end of January. Thanks. Great job. Thank you very much. All right, superintendent's report. You guys may want to stay for that, and then you can go. There's a few things on there you might be interested in. So. Okay, thanks again. Uh, always great to report the success of our students and our staff working with them. District 128 is one of 373 districts across the United States and Canada that have been selected for the ninth annual AP Honor Roll. Districts on the AP Honor Roll have simultaneously increased access to advanced placement coursework while maintaining or increasing the percentage of students earning scores of three or higher on AP exams. Honor Roll districts defy the expectation that expanding access automatically results in a decline in the percentage of exams earning scores of three or better. So again, congratulations to our uh, building and district leadership teams, our teachers and support staff, um, and everyone in the buildings, and of course our amazing students for uh, their great work. This is always exciting news for us, and we never 
um, we never take that for granted. Congratulations to the following students selected for the Illinois Music Educators All-State Ensembles. Students will rehearse and perform with a guest conductor and students from across the state January 24th through the 26th. For high school musicians, being selected to the IMEC State Festival is the highest individual honor they can receive. From LHS, all state musicians include Sebastian Ingino in band, Katie Olson in orchestra, Sarah D'Onofrio in choir, Kirsten Towander in choir, Karen Tarman in orchestra, Richard Zhao uh, in orchestra, Matt uh, Newberger in band, Elias Anderson in band, Thomas Power in music education, Carter Smith in orchestra, and David Lee in orchestra. From VHHS, all state musicians included Jackson Kisnick in voice, Timmy Zhang in oboe, David Rosales in clarinet, Sophia Heiser in voice, Nicole Barris in voice, <coughs> Ian Joe in violin, uh, Donnelly Black in voice, and Jillian Bowes in voice. So congratulations to um, all of those students. Uh, next on the superintendent's report is um, an issue that uh, the board and administration uh, have been working on for a long time on uh, LHS and VHHS capital projects. Um, and we want to take a few minutes tonight to highlight the District 120 capital plan timeline, communications and public engagement, and decision making deadlines as we are approaching those things. So we want to spend a few minutes on the front side, uh, just touching base on. Um, kind of an FAQ on capital planning in the district. So uh, what work is being proposed in capital planning at the two campuses and why? The District 128 Board and Administration have been assessing and reviewing long-term LHS and VHHS capital needs for approximately five years. In the past few years, the Board has complete, completed assessment, prioritized needs, and reviewed options to meet those needs. All current and or proposed projects will be paid from existing cash reserves. The highest priority was replacing the current, soon to be old, LHS pool and adding more on-campus parking at LHS. With significant current cafeteria needs at VHHS and continued rising enrollment, expanding the cafeteria, adding classrooms and a STEM lab, and adding a second gym became high priorities. Based on current rising enrollment and future enrollment projections at VHHS, the board is considering a conservative approach to the addition of classrooms with future options to add more classrooms as needed depending on enrollment. At LHS, the projects include completion of a new swimming pool, which has already been approved and is under construction. Uh, work is expected to be completed on the LHS swimming pool in the spring of 2019. A parking lot addition, which was approved earlier in the year and is currently under construction, will add an additional 68 parking spots on the west side of the property. Um, were approved and was approved by the board and the village of Libertyville. These additional spots are much needed on the LHS campus. And third, to repurpose the current soon to be old pool, which is under consideration by the board. Uh, a multi, with a multi-purpose physical education and extracurricular, acti uh, ac extracurricular activity uh, facility. This building and the space at LHS is important for both curricular and extracurricular needs. At VHHS, expand the cafeteria, which is currently under consideration. The existing cafeteria is able to handle all of the current VHHS students with a couple of pretty significant accommodations. The cafeteria space must be expanded into the front lobby to do so and the lunch periods are scaled back to only 22 minutes in length. The expanded cafeteria and remodeled servery area will be able to better accommodate the current uh, number of students and the expected increase in students in the future. Eight classrooms and a STEM lab, which is also under consideration. An analysis of classroom usage was completed to determine the current and future needs for classrooms. The proposed new classrooms will be able to accommodate both the expected increase in student enrollment and curriculum needs. And finally at VHHS, a second competitive gymnasium and a dance studio area um, currently under consideration. 
currently VHHS has the same curricular and extracurricular programs and needs as LHS, and as such has the same space needs. The second competitive gymnasium in the dance studio will be able to accommodate all of these needs and provide for increased um, enrollment. What are the cost uh, totals for each campus and overall? At LHS, already approved by the board and under construction, new LHS swimming pool and LHS parking lot addition. Total cost for both projects, $22.5 million. Under current consideration is repurposing the current or soon to be old swimming pool at LHS. The total estimated cost for that project is $5 million. The total estimated cost for all projects, including the swimming pool and the parking at LHS is roughly $27.5 million. At VHHS under consideration is expansion of the cafeteria, addition of eight classrooms and a STEM lab, and the addition of a second competitive gymnasium and related dance space. Total estimated cost for all of those projects is approximately $26.6 million. When will the work start and then be completed? If approved by the board, the projects would be bid at the end of January with bid awards um, being uh, awarded at the end of February. To hit applicable construction cycles, project work would begin late spring at both campuses. Tentative project completion dates are projected to be at LHS the spring of 2020 and at VHHS at the fall of 2020. How will these projects be funded if they are approved? They will be funded 100% from existing cash reserves. No referendum and no increased taxes due to uh, the funding of these projects uh, will be expected from uh, local taxpayers. In addition, since we are not borrowing money to fund the projects, there will be no interest payments as well. What's the potential tax impact um, if bonds are retiring and loans will replace that debt. Uh, there is no tax impact. District 128 has no outstanding debt. There is no uh, debt incurrence to pay for uh, for these projects. There are also no uh, interest payments as a result of these um, projects. So that would give the public a little overview uh, of uh, F, uh, FAQs and one of the things that you will hear in our uh, capital planning project um, and communication plan in a couple of minutes uh, is that we will begin to place um, FAQs really started by this uh, on the district website and we'll just build that as questions come up that we have not addressed or we have not uh, anticipated. So the second piece of this that's been shared with the board is really kind of a communication uh, discussion plan to give the public an opportunity to weigh in on this. So we just want to hit some highlights here tonight. Again, the deadline for board decision making to bid individual or all proposed projects uh, will be Tuesday, January 29th at our regular board meeting. The deadline for board decision making to actually award individual or all proposed projects is Monday, February 25th at our regularly scheduled board meeting. Uh, we're providing four opportunities for public engagement on capital projects, two public presentations, and two scheduled board and or committee meetings prior to board decision making to bid individual or all proposed projects. The standalone capital projects presentations with questions and answers are Tuesday, December 11th at 7 p.m. at the VHHS Studio Theater, so tomorrow evening, and then on Tuesday, December 18th at 7 p.m at the LHS Studio Theater. The January Board and or Committee meetings on Monday, January 14th at 5.30 p.m., the FNF Committee meeting is at the LHS Library. On Tuesday, January 29th at 7 p.m., um, the board, regular board meeting is at the VHHS Library. Note, additional opportunities to schedule um, additional standalone capital projects presentations with questions and answers in January are available if and as needed. And in addition, we also have two board meetings in February before the board would make the decision to actually award any of the bids, which would really be kind of the final decision um, in the project. If you'll note up on the screen, Stuart, if you can catch a screen up there, 
Uh, postcards were uh, recently sent out to um, area residents, uh, notifying them of the uh, two events. Uh, in addition, uh, Mary has worked very closely with the Daily Herald, uh, several of the other local papers to get articles and announcements uh, in a variety of news media, plus pushing it out through all um, social media. In addition, if you can roll forward to the next slide, uh, in addition, a second postcard will be coming out to uh, district residents. Um, it should be later this week, at the latest early next week. Um, but we have had some discussion uh, with the board about how to connect up uh, or plug in or plug up uh, with the district in terms of events like board meetings, um, uh, notifications, and being able to uh, know that board meetings are coming and being able to access uh, related documents, um, also including our neat, uh, weekly e-newsletter, e-paw prints, and also board, e-board briefs, uh, which um, uh, Mary has really worked on uh, getting out over the last year and a half. So this will give specific instructions for how to do that. There's a front and back to the card, a link that people can access, uh, and they can sign up, and then we can begin pushing information out to them. It will be very similar uh, to what they certainly have in the Village of Libertyville, and Vernon Hills probably has, frankly, the Village of Vernon Hills probably has something uh, very similar to that as well. So uh, it will give people additional opportunities. I do want to point out for the record uh, that we do have a number of residents who have already kind of plugged in through more traditional means, but this will give everyone a chance to really, um, you know, plug in with us, okay? Uh, and so we noted the postcards, and we have about 23,000 um, resident taxpayers in the school district. So um, any of those folks would be able to connect with us, again, on topic dates, uh, times, uh, and places of uh, meetings and important information. Um, so uh, we've, uh, Mary's done a really great job of working on um, kind of the technical parts of the communication here. We really appreciate her uh, efforts and her connection with uh, local journal journalists and news media so uh, they can get those things in place. And again, our first public presentation uh, review and overview tomorrow is tomorrow night right here at Vernon Hills at uh, 7 o'clock in the studio theater. Okay? So uh, that's the information. Now, we realize for the record that it takes about a week for our video from this meeting to actually be posted publicly because we're required to comply with American Disabilities Act. Uh, so there's some things that has to be done to the video. But we certainly know that there are people that watch uh, the board meetings. So for people that are just coming into this that may have not seen the postcard, may have not seen the letters in the newspaper, may have not seen the stuff on the website, um, it will give them an opportunity to, to look at any or all of those things and see what is possible, okay? All right. Um, and if there aren't any other questions or comments on that, Pat, I know you will not believe this, but that concludes the superintendent's report for tonight. Okay, very good. All right, Don't say rest, anything, Pat. The rest of this is pretty routine, so it's your call whether you guys are going to stay or not. You're welcome to stay. All right. Um, all right, next, the uh, consent vote agenda is listed. Um, we discussed, I believe, each of these earlier this evening in our committee meeting. Uh, if I could ask for a motion to approve the consent vote agenda as listed, please. I move to approve the consent vote agenda as listed. Yes. Second. Any discussion? Roll call, please. Batson. Aye. Rudy. Aye. Hessel. Aye. Huber. Aye. Luz. Aye. Munster. Aye. Rudy. Aye. All right, motion carries. Next, facilities and finance committee, chairperson Luz. All right, um, we covered these in committee um, just uh, some minutes ago. The first one on the list is Advertising Agreement, Advocate Condell Medical Center. I think we agreed in committee we are pushing this off, and this is in regards to um, a potential advertising agreement that would benefit Libertyville High School and potentially Vernon Hills High School. Um, but we're going to go ahead and, and put more details into what this agreement is and bring it back to the next meeting. Is that correctly stated? Yeah, well, yep. I mean, let's be clear. We were very supportive of what they're doing there. We just wanted right. to finalize the contract. Yep. Okay, but conceptually, I think we're fully supportive of it. All right. Any other discussion or comments on that? Nope. Second item is approval of change order LHS Aquatic Center that uh, we need to approve. Dan, do you want to just briefly? give a synopsis of what this is. 
Yeah, due to the weather conditions and uh, haven't noticed it's cold and we got some snow recently, uh, we need to uh, we need to cover the buildings so they can continue the masonry work. And so uh, that results in a change order of approximately 75,000. Um, it still is within the contingency that we've budgeted for this project, um, but that's just, that's so in order to not delay the project further, you know, we're, we could see some delay from some of the weather weather things, but we're still targeting for spring of 20, uh, 2019. And I think I'll just reiterate what you just said. This is not for additional funds. This doesn't mean the budget's going higher. This is an allocation of funds within that need to be approved because of some changes that happened with the weather. Correct. In the 21.5 million, we have a contingency for um, things like this to happen. So this just uh, spends some of that. Okay. Uh, do I have a motion to go ahead and approve the change order as presented? I move to approve the change order not to exceed $75,000 uh, to uh, Gilbane. Um, yep. Do we have a second? Second. Any discussion or any other questions? Okay. Roll call. Rudy? Aye. Castle? Aye. Huber? Aye. Luce? Aye. Lundstedt. Aye. Rooney. Aye. Baxson. Aye. So it passes. Third item on here is resolution to designate preparation of tentative budget for fiscal year 2020. So we are required to go ahead and give the okay to move forward with preparation of the next budget. Correct. Still aging, right? So um, I don't think, I think that's it in a nutshell. So do we have any, do I have an approval or a motion to I move to approve the resolution to designate preparation of the tentative budget for fiscal year 2020. <clears throat> you have a second? Second. Uh, any other discussion? Roll call. Hessel? Aye. Huber? Aye. Luce? Aye. Munstead? Aye. Rooney? Aye. Baxton? Aye. Groody? Aye. Yeah, that passes. And the last thing on us is a contract recommendation for approval to move forward with replacing one of our school activity buses that uh, is well past its life cycle and we are in need for another bus. We talked about this. Also in committee, Dan, anything else to add on this? No, nope, just that it's with uh, Southern Bus and Mobility. This is a state contract, so this is something that's already publicly bid that we can access that bid essentially through the state. So through it's state. the amount of $50,065. Okay. Do I have a motion to move forward with this contract recommendation? So moved. Second. Second. Any other discussion? Roll call. Huber. Aye. Blues. Aye. Lundstedt. Aye. Rudy. Aye. Baxton. Aye. Rudy. Aye. Hessel. Aye. And I believe that is it for facilities and finance. Any other? Okay. All right, thank you. Uh, program and personnel, Chairperson Batson. Uh, thank you, Dr. Grudy. We have a few items here. Uh, first on the agenda is a, the amended school calendar. Uh, this was discussed earlier in, in committee, and we just uh, clarified one date. As our yeah, the calendar was initially adopted uh, last year by the board. We, we adopted uh, two calendar years last year for the first time. And the only change made to the calendar is to uh, add the place for a fourth um, institute day, which previously wasn't added. Um, and it places that institute day on the day before Thanksgiving, as was the practice for this 2018-19 uh, school year. All right. May I have a motion, please? I motion to approve the amended school calendar. Second. Any additional questions, comments? Okay, roll call participation. Aye. Lundstedt? Aye. Rooney? Aye. Baxton? Aye. Rooney? Aye. Castle? Aye. Huber? Aye. Okay, motion passes. Uh, next is exciting new, uh, and I'm not being facetious, uh, uh, some, some very interesting new uh, curriculum uh, proposals for both uh, Libertyville and Vernon Hills High Schools. We have several new course proposals at uh, the two schools, uh, many of which are um, interdisciplinary and being posted in uh, different uh, areas of the curriculum guide, which has also been updated for the 1920 uh, school year. Um, so we ask that you support these 
new curriculum uh, proposals, including um, advanced topics in computer science, which will be posted in the math and business departments, an academic tutor program, which provides students the opportunity uh, to earn uh, credit while supporting uh, growth in their fellow students by tutoring in various disciplines. Um, we have a new course uh, at both schools that integrates physical welfare as and uh, foods. It is called uh, LIFE, it, um, the Lifelong Integration of Food and Exercise. We also have a global capstone experience and a global scholar program uh, that are new to both schools. We have a new course um, in the science department, which is AP Physics 1, uh, designed to um, offer students the opportunity to take an AP Physics course and to take the AP Physics 1 exam, um, in addition to our current AP Physics 1 and 2 course, which offers students a more rapidly paced approach to AP Physics and the opportunity to take both the 1 and the 2 exams. Um, we have proposals at uh, Vernon Hills only to, uh, to introduce the um, iOS app development course that is currently offered at Libertyville. We also have a proposal at Vernon Hills to combine uh, two former courses and to introduce Style Studio, which provides students, again, the opportunity to focus on their interests and their passions um, in that area. Um, and then we have a list of name and requirement changes, including the designation of a good number of our courses at both schools as globally focused, allowing students to earn the Global Scholar capstone uh, designation on their um, uh, diplomas uh, by completing that entire program. Thank you. I'm also looking forward to sneak peek at the uh, uh, curriculum guide that we saw earlier. Looking forward to seeing that. Uh, come to life next uh, in January? Is it? In January the guide will be live. We're still working on the finishing touches, but we've, we've designed what we hope is a much more user-friendly and, uh, and efficient way for students and their families to understand what our offerings are and to make those selections that will forward their future endeavors. All great things. Um, may I have a motion and a second to approve the curriculum proposal? I move to approve the proposed curriculum. Second. Any comments, questions? Well, I'll get you on just highlight that we also spent about a half an hour on that topic earlier this evening, so yeah. it looks like we're doing this quickly. Yeah. So we already spent a fair amount of time. Yeah, yeah. Okay, uh, roll call, please. Monstead? Aye. Rooney? Aye. Batson? Aye. Rudy? Aye. Assel? Aye. Huber? Aye. Luke? Aye. Motion passes. Um, we have a list of um, quite a few board policies. Uh, these were reviewed in some detail at our committee meeting earlier. This is a first reading, so uh, as normally we go through them uh, at, in some detail. We ask questions, we get, we'll expect some feedback, and then uh, next month we'll come back for a second reading and adoption once we fully understand if there's changes to be made or adjustments to be made, we'll do that in the interim. So uh, just a quick uh, rundown, the list, uh, policy 2, colon 80, board member oath and conduct, uh, just the uh, oath of office uh, based on the Illinois school code, uh, policy uh, 2, colon 120, organization school board meeting, um, adjustments, uh, again, in response to school code changes. Uh, safety, um, policy 4, colon 170, uh, requires a active shooter drill no later than 90 days after the first day of school year. Under personnel, we have uh, policy uh, 5, colon 60, uh, has to do with um, Illinois Wage Payment Collection Act, some adjustments based on that. Policy 5, colon 220, substitute teachers, uh, uh, amongst other things, it allows uh, things that allows a, a retired teacher to come back and, and teach uh, 120 days rather than uh, the previously permitted 100 days or 500 uh, paid hours, uh, establishes a short-term substitute teaching license uh, for a period of time that, that sunsets in 2023, um, and some other things are, uh, related to uh, substitute teachers. Again, we went through these in quite some detail earlier. Uh, policy 6, colon 60, curriculum content, uh, adjustments uh, related to driver's ed, clarifying some driver's ed things. 
uh, policy 7 colon 70, attendance and truancy, uh, that requires some ongoing professional development uh, for staff. Uh, policy 7 colon 100, adds the designation of uh, dental to the uh, examinations, the health, eye, and dental uh, examinations and immunizations that all new um, students have to uh, have. Uh, 7 colon 190, uh, under student behavior, um, it adds some things uh, related to Ashley's Law, uh, which has to do with uh, some medical cannabis um, requirements uh, that, that was changed in the law. Policy 7 colon 250, student support services, um, uh, just updated, it says for continuous improvement, I don't recall the exact wording change, I recall it was minor. 7 colon 260, exemption from physical education, updated in regards to uh, uh, substitutions for physical education uh, to align with board policy 6 colon 130. Um, uh, 7 colon 270 is administering medicines to students. Again, this has to do with Ashley's law that uh, came into effect and allowing uh, under very specific conditions medical cannabis um, for uh, students. 7 colon 290, suicide and depression awareness, um, uh, incorporates some, some required training, which uh, I understand we already do quite a bit of this as it is, so this just uh, reflects the Illinois school, school code change that takes effect uh, January 1st of next year. And then lastly, 7 colon 305, student athlete concussions and head injuries, and this requires us to uh, uh, provide uh, in, in response to a student that has a concussion. In addition to all the other things that we do to support that student, uh, we're uh, responsible to provide them with a Illinois Department of Public Health uh, brochure related to concussions. So again, we went in, it sounds like we're going through this rather quickly, but we went through those in some detail earlier in committee. So um, can we have a, um, we don't even have to vote on this. We just no, no, next the month. first reading. Yeah. So that's the first reading of the board policy. That's information anything? you get for the board. Yeah. Yeah. And we'll do that next month. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, any uh, thing under other for program of personnel? Nope. Okay, back to you, Dr. Gershwin. Okay, thank you. Um, let's see, no property uh, sealed. Yeah, we had our quarterly CEDO meeting. Um, this one was a little different than any I'd ever been at. Um, we were all greeted with uh, the governing board members of the 30 plus uh, member districts were greeted with uh, an aisle of uh, back staff uh, with lots of signs and chants, several deep on each side, uh, welcoming us and reminding us that we are in contract negotiations. So that was unexpected. And then when we came inside, um, also packed house, uh, many, many parents, students, alumni from the John Powers uh, Deaf and Hard of Hearing system within Seagull who were, had a lot of concern over the fact that there's beginning discussions of some pretty radical changes to moving that program and changing the way it's set up. Um, so things were communicated to that community uh, just as the talks of maybe what to do about some of this, it's just in the preliminary stages. So it got quite a strong reaction about over an hour of public comment um, from people just pleading to please leave it the way it is. I, you know, anyway, um, so it was, it was an interesting thing. I did follow up with, with the new superintendent to get a little background information. It sounds like it's still, if friends, maybe you are aware of some of this, but um, it sounds like they're really working on a lot of different moving uh, constraints with where people are housed, and yet it, it's currently housed in a portion of Hawthorne um, that's John Powers's, uh, but it doesn't seem as though it's really for sure something that has to do with their space constraints. So it sounds like there's a lot of information yet to be gathered, but it was very impassioned and um, moving. Um, and uh, in addition to that, uh, again, they are seem to be having quite a hard time getting a quorum of governing board members to attend, so there really was no business that we could conduct because uh, we didn't have people to mm -hmm. vote. Um, but we did have a chance for some presentations by all the different principals of all the different programs they had there to just briefly review uh, what they do and show us some here. Uh, you know, we did it quickly because the meeting had been quite lengthy already. Um, so that thought is very interesting. And when we do have CEO come here from time to time, it 
it's been a while, so maybe it's time for yep. something. Especially with all the changes that are released. Yeah, I mean, I don't know enough about yeah. why they let why they decided. Again, it, it sounds like it's a communication thing. So maybe that wasn't done in a maybe the timing gap was off a little bit, but I don't. That's just from an observation of the outside there. So anyway. So it was interesting. Interesting. It sounds like this, they're trying to make lots of changes due to lots of different factors and uh, certainly a little bit more information as time goes on. But yeah. All right. And so for those of you who don't know, I just want to acknowledge um, Karen's hard work in being our representative to CEDAW because you've done that now for a quite a while. All right. So in addition to all the stuff that all of us do, um, she takes on that additional responsibility goes up there just about every month. Oh, no, no. It's like four times a year. Four times a year. And then sometimes there's some. Um, and it's, it's, a, it's a great, you know, opportunity for us to know what's going on. If you haven't been there, it's well worth visiting. All right? All you got to do is walk yeah, the hallways and start to, to really appreciate what goes on there. Um, it's not all done at, that, at the campus up by... Um, uh, up in Lake, Lake, but uh, Lake. well, the, there's a little bit of it down here. There's a little bit in one line. Most of it's up in Gage mm -hmm. Lake, uh, but you know, it's, it's very interesting to uh, It's very good. Okay. okay, thank you. Uh, Jim said no IASB? No. no. Correct? Okay. Um, other than, does anybody want to comment on the uh, meetings last month? We haven't met since then, have we? The uh, convention downtown? No. Have we met since then? No. no. Anybody yeah. want to? I know Lisa, you would have a question. Uh, well, yeah. You guys are well. You want to make a few comments on? Uh, uh, both of us, um, if we attended the. Um, we did our para training. Required para training. We did some um, informational sessions. It was, it was very, very worthwhile. Very time well spent. Um, the folks that presented that para training were. They had Dan Stanley's ability to take complicated mm -hmm. issues and make them make sense to people who aren't necessarily lawyers in this particular case. Um, but yeah, very very well done. Did you have any uh, interesting conversations with people from other boards to understand oh, yeah. what they're experiencing? <laughs> well, I, I can speak for myself oh, yeah. that um, there were several situations where I was able to reflect on <coughs> how fortunate we are um, the, the challenges and the issues that are facing many of our peers, um, you know, were enough to send a chill down my spine. Uh, so although we work hard and we, uh, every school board member works hard and really cares about their district and the students we serve, um, but it made it, uh, really brought the point home of how fortunate we are here in this district, both from a standpoint of, uh, our resources, uh, certainly our teachers and our administrative professionals um, and issues that we face here um, are very different than our peers and it really gave me an appreciation for the diversity throughout Illinois. Um, yeah. Just a, a great amount of diversity in our state. Yeah. I will uh, make one quick comment. I, I attended on our behalf the uh, delegate assembly. I know there was some controversy with the, uh, the uh, one in particular uh, vote item that we were uh, we were asked to vote on um, and that related to the uh, allowing encouraging the uh, legislation uh, the legislators in Springfield to pass a law to allow local school boards the ability to designate staff members non police staff members uh, as um, people that could carry a, a weapon a gun in the school uh, on the school premises, uh, and I will just say that that, uh, that vote did not pass. It uh, it was relatively close, but not not really close. They had a 400 and some delegates, and it was maybe 170 something to 200 or something. I don't remember the exact numbers. I should have uh, looked that up, but it, it did not pass. So that was a big controversial issue, primarily. Um, schools more in a rural area hoping to get that passed so that they could encourage their uh, their folks in Springfield to to push for that and then the, the more suburban uh, groups like us uh, that would uh, be less inclined to, uh, to to want that so there was one interesting as in support of their need 
but not in support of that um, uh, particular initiative. There was one individual that said, if you brought uh, an item, a resolution for us to vote on, that would uh, ask for Springfield for additional funding to help support those people that are in a more rural, rural area to provide them with uh, police resources or, or some kind of additional support. He'd vote for it in a minute, but he felt that the, this particular individual felt he couldn't vote for that, that resolution. So I think there's an understanding of the need that just uh, the majority of the folks didn't feel that that was the right way to go about it. Start a conversation. Yeah, there was a lot of feedback it's an on both sides. Good yeah. conversation. Yeah. How do we do that? Yeah, we don't do it that way. How are we going to do it? Okay. Okay. All right. Thanks. So, uh, can I ask for a motion to convene an executive session? Again, we have three topics tonight. First one, collective negotiating matters, 5 ILCS 1.20 slash 2C2. Um, second one, employment of an employee, 5 ILCS 120 slash 2C1. And then the third, purchase of real property, 5 ILCS 120 slash 2C5. And again, other than to return to open session, we have no plans to take action on those three topics tonight. So, so moved. Stuart, you can go home. Second. What? Who did the motion? I, I, I second. Okay. Second. Any I'm discussion? Sorry. Roll call. Rudy. I'm here for you. Oh, sorry. Rudy. Oh, roll call. Rooney. Rooney. Roll call. Rooney. Yeah. Hi. <laughs> Hi. Batson. Hi. Rudy. Hi. Hustle. Hi. Huber. Hi. Hi. Lundstedt. Hi. 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 Hi.